Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to Boosting Laboratories Journal Club. Um, today I will talk about the article named Electrical Manipulation of Topological Antiferromagnetic State. It's by Hansham Tasei et al. and it's published in Nature. So uh, there are a few uh, topics that I should mention before diving into the article itself, uh, because it has some physics behind it, and there are some terms and mechanisms we should be aware of. So this is basically the whole effect family. They are all cousins. Some of them are uh, first degree cousins, and some of them are the second degree cousins. It starts with whole effect, the regular whole effect, which means that uh, negative and positive charges, charges are being polarized inside an, on on the surface of the material when there is an applied magnetic field. And then there's the anomalous Hall effect, which means that we can also perform the whole effect without magnetic field and replacing it with the magnetization. So we can separate the charge, uh, separate the charges with spins uh, with the magnetic material. And then we have spin hole effect that we can polarize the spin of the incoming current, electric current, charge current, uh, depending on their spin properties, spin angular momentum properties. And then uh, after the experimental techniques are getting advanced, more advanced and more advanced, uh, it was possible to observe quantum mechanical effects on this area of, uh, area of uh, whole effect physics. So um, first it was realized that it was possible to quantize this uh, whole effect by applying a magnetic field onto a surface of some certain materials that um, the electrons are performing cyclotron motion on the surface of the material. And there's only one transport channel at the very edges of the material. So this effect uh, invoked some kind of topological aspect and people said that, okay, there's a surface, there's a surface topology, and actually electron is moving towards the edge states. So there's one state that makes electron flow in, around the material, but the, at the end, it, the material itself is insulated. So uh, there's a conflicting behavior inside the material. And when it's asked that, okay, we obtain the whole effect in a quantized fashion. So can we do the same for the anomalous whole effect? And it was obviously uh, possible to obtain this effect, quantum anomalous Hall effect, by um, obtaining an edge state, once again, like the quantum Hall effect, but depending on, the, uh, depending on the magnetic transport this time with a magnetized material. So there's a magnetization instead of applied field, like in the quantum Hall effect. And at the end, it was also possible to observe quantized spin hole effect, which is the quantum spin hole effect. And this time um, it is observed that the transportation channels for electrons are doubled, but not degenerate since the up spin channels and the down spin channels are not the same. So it was um, again, edge states. It was also topological, but it was also able to polarize the spin states with inside and outside, up spins and down spins, different transport chains. So uh, when we take, take a look at the band structure, it looks like this. So starting from the first image at the right, uh, you see an insulating phase, which means that there are no free electrons, no electrons passing by between the bands. So there's a huge gap between valence band and conduction band. So it is impossible to uh, make an electron to uh, pass through the valence band to conduction band. This is what we call insulator, it insulates. So um, when we consider the quantum hole effect, uh, there's a certain material and you, you observe it experimentally that, okay, there are edge states. And in these edge states, we see electron is jumping, but at the surface, at the bulk, we obviously observe an insulating state. So this is how its band, uh, band gap looks like and band structure looks like. Um, 
As you can see, between the valence band and the conduction band, there is only one edge state. This edge state means there is only one possible way of transporting the electron from valence band to conduction band. So this is how quantum Hall effect is being performed inside the material. And when we take a look at the quantum spin Hall effect, this time we need to take two different uh, transporting channels between valence band and the conduction band uh, because we have two spin states up and down and they are distinct transportation channels. So this is how it looks like. Okay, uh, all the matter we talked about since was in 2D, just like you see in the image in the left, um, there's one channel for the quantum hole effect and there's two channels for quantum spin hole effect. And, but there's also the 3D case. There are 3D topological insulators and there are 3D uh, materials. So uh, what happens when these quantum mechanical effects are observed in 3D materials instead of 2D systems like edge states? So this is basically what happens in the band structure. I will talk about this very briefly and quickly. So as you can see in the first image, uh, there's a regular topological insulator. There's a band, uh, there's a passage between conduction band and valence band, which means that material itself is an insulator, but there are some ways that connects the valence band and conduction band. So bigger the conduction band and valence band it gets and sharper it gets, as you can see in the second image, in the Dirac semi-metal phase, they are touching each other at one single point. There's a singularity. And that very single point is called the Dirac point. There's a Dirac point inside the material and this is called the Dirac semi-metal. So in the, after this phase, you see that uh, bands are getting closer or wider. So if they disconnect from each other, we know that the band structure will turn into an ordinary insulator. Just like any other insulator, there will be a huge gap between the one span and the convection band. And in all aspects of the matter, it will be insulated. But in other case, if we can obtain a degeneracy and a dipole uh, structure in the touching point of two bands, valence band and conduction band, then we will have the weight veil symmetry. This is what, what's important for this article because this article is working on the weight symmetry. And why is it important for us? So this is a very basic theoretical framework. And this is the foundation of the relativistic quantum mechanics. Um, there were three dif different solutions for quantum relativistic physics. And once was the Dirac equation, second was the Weyl equation, and third was the Majorana equation. Each of these fermions are being observed in the condensed matter systems, and they are uh, quite important and promising for observing exotic physics and taking the uh, quantum computing, spintronics, and all kinds of magnetic interaction with matter to the another level. That's why uh, research on rail semimetals, Dirac semimetals are quite important in spintronics and other type of magnetic materials. So uh, this is basically how it looks like to have a 3D topological insulator. Um, at the last scheme, in the regular topological insulator, there's a band inversion which means that some part of conduction band is actually gathered with the valence band, they switch places. So there is actually a magical state that takes uh, electrons uh, from valence band to conduction band. But in the direct metal phase, as you can see, there's one single point. So this is very important for the study. Okay, uh, once again, in this picture, wave semimetals have two wave points and one of them acts as a source and one of them acts as the drain. So this physics creates a very exotic uh, behavior as a very large anomalous Hall effect behavior. So there must be ways that we can identify a material as the wave semimetal. So this is why it is important to identify material as a wave semimetal and obtain that, obtain the information that this material hosts the whale points instead of Dirac points, or if it is a regular insulator or it's a reg regular 
uh, topological space. And this is the point where we are interested in Wilson metals. If we apply electrical field and magnetic field parallel to these nodes, well points, um, there's a chiral anomaly that because the chirality of these well points, which are shown in here with the uh, red and green, um, as you can see, one of them is the so acts as a source and one of them is the drain. These are the well fermions and there's the very flux between them. There's a charge flux between them, which creates a large animal soul effect physics. And when this uh, induction is performed, we observe very large animal soul effect. So this is how we can benefit from these materials by obtaining a scalable, huge, anomal, uh, anomalously large magnetoresistance and exotic conduct, magnetoconduction properties. So we can use them in spintronic devices, in hardwares, in quantum computing, and so on. Okay, so um, after a brief discussion of what whale metal is and what we are after, I'm passing to the uh, article itself. This is how introduction to the uh, article looks like. And basically, uh, we are very familiar with the antiferromagnetic switching phenomena. And in this context, uh, this uh, article works on the antiferromagnetic switching. Only difference is the material itself is an antiferromagnet and it hosts wave fermions and it acts as a topological material and there's a topological protection. So the basic, uh, so the basic uh, goal was to obtain the perfect antiferromagnetic switching in a cogromal lattice in a topological antiferromagnet, which sounds uh, quite hard and um, very uh, extensive work. So um, how do you know if you have wave symmetry? So once you have chiral anomaly and you have positive longitudinal mag magnetoconductivity and sign of magnetoconductivity is anisotropic, which means that if you convert the uh, way of the direction of the magnetic field and you try to uh, measure the other way, it will be negative. And if you measure the longitudinal magnetoresistance, it will be positive. And there will be a planar, planar Hall effect this is the theoretical framework, and this work has been done in this article. This theoretical framework has been fit perfectly on the experimental data. And you can also, you should also observe a very large anomalous nurse effect to obtain that you have a wave cinematic. And very quick note to remember, or just a pinch of knowledge for the ones who doesn't know what. A and E is, it's basically um, electric field and thermal gradient inside the magnet in, in a given to a magnetized material and obtaining voltage uh, from this material. This is a thermal gradient effect on magnetization, which creates a potential. You can just uh, imagine like this. And also what we need to understand the mechanism in this article they are using spin orbit torque for antiferromagnetic switching. And this is a very familiar picture that also uh, I'm working on. And this is how spin orbit torque antiferromagnetic switching works. So basically you are creating a magnetization inside the antiferromagnetic layer by invoking the spin hole effect. And the spin hole effect is being invoked by the various materials and one of them is the platinum. We are injecting current inside the platinum layer uh, which is a high spin orbit coupling layer. And by using this spin hole effect, we are injecting a magnetization inside the antiferromagnetic layer. And since the antiferromagnetic layer has two, uh, has nail order parameter, which means that uh, spins can be aligned like this or spins can be aligned like this. So there are two dimensional, three dimensional structures. And this is iron manganese and they are working on very uh, exotic material, which has kagoma lattice, which means that it will be way more complicated than this one. But this is the basic structure how spin orbit torque works on uh, antiferromagnetic switching. I want to, to remind you. So 
um, I'm passing to the database, and this is how manganese tin magnetic conductivity characterization works. So um, at first you are watching the angle dependent and applied field dependent magnetic conductivity measurements. And at the other side, you see that plumber hole effect comparison with theoretical framework. So they measured uh, four probe uh, hole effect measurements they uh, obtained. And as you can see, they, they, they performed the measurement in 300 Kelvin and 200, 250 Kelvin. And they changed the direction of the field. They changed the direction of, uh, they changed the planarization of current because one of the data belongs to H parallel to I and H perpendicular to the pi. And at the other one, the angle is changing when the direction is kept stable. Uh, we can talk about this data uh, at later on as well. I'm just showing you how it works. And as you can see in the second picture, um, angle dependent measurements for the plumber hole effect fits perfectly to the theoretical framework. It works in a nine Tesla, as you can see here, both in 300 Kelvin and 250 Kelvin. So this characterization work uh, shows that they are working on uh, explicit whale semi-metal, which is anti-permanent. So to obtain this exotic material, it is uh, quite hard to investigate uh, the system. Okay, so um, after this, they took a look for the anomalous nurse effect and they obtained the data for the anomalous nurse coefficient and hole resistive field gathered with, supported with transverse, transverse thermoelectric conductivity and hole conductivity. So um, at the other image, you see a huge graph filled with different uh, colors and different names. This is where the comparison for uh, the ratio of anomalous, uh, anomalous nurse effect coefficient and applied field uh, magnetization. I, I think it's M applied field. And how manganese tin stands with single crystal and tin film properties. So they have both sputtering and they have both molecular beam taxi. So they had chance to compare this data and work on whichever they want in single crystal or tin film. So after comparing this data with two different uh, mechanisms, single crystal and tin film, and they saw that the accuracy is pretty close. So why not working in tin film? when obtaining the transport measurements. After characterizing and making sure that material uh, shows whale semi metal properties, the second phase was to decide how to obtain spin orbit torque and thermodynamic switching. So this is basically what they are trying to do. And this is how they decide to uh, what kind of thickness they need for switching. They, they use both plus positive spin hole angle material and negative spin hole angle material. Platinum is the positive spin hole angle material and tungsten is the negative spin hole angle material. As you can see uh, in the second picture, they uh, compared their um, resistivity value with their thickness of this uh, platinum and tungsten uh, samples. And they have decided to go with 7.2 nanometers of platinum on top of the material to obtain current induced spin orbit, orbit switching of the antiferromagnetic state. So, um, in this case, we are uh, talking about the material with magnetization. This is a magnetic material, magnetic whale semi metal. So, instead of um, resistivity measurements, they have decided to go with uh, anomalous solar effect measurements. Because if you are uh, working with a magnet magnetic material, 
And if you claim that you are making a magnetic switching, you should be able to observe it over the anomalous soul effect. Because as you can see in the previous slides, anomalous soul effects works for this. There will be a potential difference when there's a magnetization difference. And in this case, they obtain the right current. It's a pulse. And it starts from eight, minus 80 to plus 80 milliamperes. And they are obtaining uh, hysteresis in whole, whole voltage when compared with the writing current. And when it's uh, applied to magnetic field, magnetic field versus uh, the um, voltage from the current and the whole voltage from the current and whole voltage from the field ratio. And they compared it to magnetic fields. Only uh, difference, only uh, differentiation was the HX, which means the when the uh, field is applied at the X direction. So in other two cases, there were no changes. It was zero. There were no whole current since it is zero. There are no whole uh, potential, I'm sorry. So at the third one, we observe the same ratio uh, depending with the thickness. As you can see, it was nearly same with the other picture. It's only depending on the uh, sign of the spin hole angle of the material. If the spin hole angle of the material is negative, the ratio is positive. If the spin hole angle is negative, uh, positive, the ratio is negative. This was what they get. And at the E, you see whole voltage versus the right current comparison with different uh, temperatures. And at the end, you see different uh, multiple amount of magnetic field applied to the system and right current is injected and the reaction of the system. As you can see, when there's no magnetic field applied at the zero, there's no hysteresis movement, which means that uh, magnetic memory behavior doesn't work when there's an applied magnetic field. And it increases with the current, uh, right current induced. And this is the switching time experiment. This is how it works. Um, when the current is applied, uh, voltage is four minus four voltage, whole, whole voltage, I mean, uh, microvolts. And it peaks up when there's a switching here at the two seconds and goes down again. In two seconds, uh, not second, sorry, times when you do the switching and write the current here, like you are not writing here and writing here. You are not writing here and writing here. So this creates a sequence and it uh, works quite accurate due to this data. And at the second picture, we see that um, in different, uh, I think writing currents and it's hysteresis behaviors. I couldn't really understand this data. <clears throat> <coughs> so um, this is a scheme, <clears throat> what they're expected to have. <coughs> uh, wait, excuse me for a second. <coughs> Hocam ben bir su içip geleyim mi? Aa, beni duyabiliyor musunuz? And um, this is the scheme that they were planning to induce the spin orbit torque switching on the antiparmanyas material. And I will go deeper in this one. So this is uh, basically the SOT switching in crystal grain configuration under a current and a bias magnetic field H along the X direction. And C plane, which means the Kagome layer is perpendicular to the current. And unlike 
our study, uh, now they are also applying a bias field with the current to, uh, to get the uh, exotic whale, whale semi-metal property of um, obtaining a very large magnetoresistance resistance and anomalous solar effect when you have parallel uh, electric field and magnetic field. So um, this is how the spin current works. And when the spin current is injected into the material, um, it will work like this into the Kogama lattice. So there is one big octopole magnetic moment, and there are three other magnetic moments in this material. So uh, what they expect was having a, a 30 degree with the in-plane layer of this octopole moment. And when it passes the 20 nanoseconds, it will be zero because the psi here is the octopole polarization as a uh, octopole polarization angle. Octopole one is the one big one here, the orange one. And since uh, the data in the previous two previous slides uh, obtained that the easy axis for this experiment was the X and the magnetic fields applied in the X direction. So when it's um, after 20 seconds, between 20 seconds and 40 seconds, the system will be in this state. And when the magnetic field is applied in the negative X direction, system should be switching to this. And when the system is up, when the magnetic field is applied in the positive X direction, system should be in this state. This is the, uh, this is what they expect from the switching experiment. And this is, how it looks like from the top, as you can consider from this. And slash lines are the magnetic easy axis. And this is the overall procedure. Um, starting from here, the green arrows are the spins injected from the heavy metal layer, platinum layer. And for two cases that I write, greater than zero and I write smaller than zero, which means that there are two ways of the writing current. So at first stage, uh, the first image is the beginning stage and second image is the second stage. And after that, when the uh, magnetic field is applied, it is H cross product P. Uh, by the way, the magnetic field is applied parallel to the X, as we mentioned. So P is the orientation of the octopole uh, moment here, the orange one. So H cross product P will be the torque applied on P as they claim. And this will be the latest stages here for the material itself, the, for the Kagoma lattice. And there are two distinct scenarios. And this is for when X is applied in the positive direction, in the negative direction. And when the writing current going backwards and two other stages. And in here, the switching hall hole voltage and the same ratio, the whole voltage versus whole volt all volt switch differences and other few datas are explained. These are basically uh, how the magnetization of this material changes when the uh, current is applied, right, writing current is applied and the triggering of the large anomalous soul effect with the exotic uh, magnetoconductivity properties of whale cell metal, uh, how it affects on the magnetic switching. By the way, um, I didn't know if you have, I don't know if you have noticed, but the material itself is a thin film with 40 nanometers. So they are actually expecting a magnetization switching in a 40 nanometer, 40 nanometer material, which is quite huge for us. 
And in this one, they have analyzed their data for both switching and voltage created by this animal soul effect experiment. And at the end, this is the right current number times and voltage versus uh, writing current. These are to explain the accuracy of the system and endurance of the system, which means that, okay, you have this material, you have this spin orbit torque, and you are, you are now available, available to create a magnetic device, magnetic switching device for this, because obviously it works fine, it reacts fine, and its endurance is fine. And this was all I wanted to talk. Uh, thank you for listening, thank you for your time. Please, you can ask your questions. Şey kayda durdurabilirsin bence. Kaydı durdurmamış mı?